What's going on everybody? C4 here today bringing you rebuild number two. Way back when I asked you guys to vote. The Jets were the number one team you want to see me rebuild. And if you haven't checked that out, go do that now. And the Cleveland Browns were coming in at number two. I was kind of surprised. I thought the Browns would be number one. Especially with all the draft picks in the format of a realistic rebuild. Uh, is definitely going to give me the most weapons, the most opportunities to build a legit team right away. Last year, Madden 17, we did two different rebuild attempts with the Cleveland Browns. Both were failures. However, if you're just stopping by for the first time, in December, on Christmas Day, we released the first Cleveland Browns realistic rebuild. And in my genius, my Nostradamus vision power, I had the Deshaun Kaiser going to the Browns just because, just because. And we ended up making Deshaun Kaiser like a 90 overall QB. Uh, so, I mean, there you go. That's just the kind of guy I am. So, looking at this year's rebuild, Kaiser is starting out as a 77. And I'm looking very forward to try to building this entire team around him. Uh, looking outside of Kaiser, we have Kessler, we have Osweiler. We definitely want to get Brock Osweiler off the books as soon as possible to free up a bunch of cap. I mean, that 12 mil, that's like two good free agents off the market. Uh, so, we may have to wait till year two to use that. At the running back spot, we have Isaiah Crowell and Duke Johnson. I'm liking the 87 overall for Crowell. He's 24, which means in these five-year rebuilds, I mean, like, year, year one, or actually, sorry, the last year is probably going to be the only year he starts to take a bad regression, unless he just straight up sucks. Uh, we might have to make a tough decision at one point. Who do you want to keep between the two? But as it is right now, I really do like that one-two punch of Duke Johnson and Isaiah Crowell. And we also have the opportunity, perhaps, to make Duke Johnson a slot wide receiver, which is what the Browns are kind of thinking about using him as in real life but as of right now he'll be our receiving back uh look at the wide receivers we got kenny Britt, just a band-aid type player josh gordon probably won't develop too too much the big guy is going to be Corey coleman going forward i'm going to make sure that he well, actually because of the sim and how the sim works we'll probably leave him as our wide receiver three because they usually get the best stat line when all is said and done uh but outside of that man i mean i am a big hollywood higgins fan from colorado state but our wide receivers are probably one of the biggest positions we're going to try to address uh, in the upcoming drafts. Uh, tight end spot, we have 21-year-old David Njoku, the rookie, who's an 82 overall, which is absolutely insane. Crazy generous. I think his base rating is like a 78. And then when he when he pops, I don't know how he got an 82, to be completely honest with you. It's one of those, whatever, when you join a franchise mode, once you get into your scheme and stuff, it gives him a massive bump. I ain't going to complain, but 82 is very generous. We'll leave that as is, but it's nice to have our franchise tight end at the starting point. Look at the Cleveland Browns offensive line, probably one of the most underrated offensive lines in football when you're talking about it, but when you really look at what they have done in real life in free agency, their O-line is legit as shit. Uh, we have Joe Thomas, 98 overall. We could probably try to flip him for some picks, but let's be real. Joe Thomas, you know, we'll throw him up on the trade block. We have to get something exceptional. But like I said, in the change from rebuilds in 17 to 18, we're going to try to not trade away all our good players. But this one is kind of realistic in return in results to, you know, a lot of people have been saying, is Joe Thomas going to get traded? Is Joe Thomas going to get traded? I'm going to say right now, especially with our young QB, we're going to have to get at least a first round pick for us to move up from Joe Thomas. Because outside of that, he's still incredibly valuable to us. And I'm pretty sure at least based off of Madden, he would play three to four years, which is the majority of our rebuild. Uh, looking at left guard, we have Joel Batonio, 84 year, years old. That is looking good. And Drangle here is depth, 6'6". Six, six. Maybe we can slide with the tackle if need be. Center, we have J.C. Treader coming over from the Green Bay Packers as a free agent. This guy's going to be with us for the long haul. At right guard, we have Kevin Zeitler, the big money free agent. We have John Greco, 85 overall. Again, another guy, we're going to throw him up on the trade block. If not, man, worst case scenario, we have some options at right tackle, which is probably the weakest position we have cam irving here who was a better tackle than center at florida state and has kind of been fluctuating around i don't have high expectations of him to develop he has normal dev trade which is surprising i was kind of worried they might give him a slow uh, but that's what that starts out with on the defensive side of the ball though we have ogba who's an absolute monster for us a diamond in the rough a gem in madden 17 every brown rebuild we did he was getting double digit sacks so hopefully he can continue that we have miles garrett 85 overall the first round draft pick he's an absolute monster we got D-Tackle, Danny Shelton. We're going to a 4-3, so I definitely going to be looking at bringing in another D-Tackle sooner than later. But what I can tell you is Brent, Brian's probably going to be gone, and we're going to see if one of these rookies wants to catch on, be it Caleb Brantley or Larry Ogunjobi. Uh, left of the side linebacker, we got Jamie Collins. He's a beast. 27, though, he's at that age where it's going to be tough to have him for the full five years of the rebuild. We got Kirksey, who looks like a franchise linebacker for us as long as we can continue to pay him. Uh, right outside linebacker, definitely a glaring spot here that we need to improve upon. Secondary, again, I 
probably should try to improve upon it. We got Joe Hayden, my Florida Gator bias. I love him, but he doesn't do well in Madden. We have Taylor. I mean, both these guys here, these three actually, even McCordy coming over from the Titans, they're pretty much like a Band-Aid, you know? We, we definitely have to probably revamp the entirety of the secondary minus one player, in my opinion. Uh, looking at free safety, we have Calvin Pryor coming over from the Jets. Don't know how much he's going to de develop for us here. He played well for me in Madden last year, so we'll see what happens. But, it, you know, he kind of is at the mercy of the Sim. And then at strong safety, we have Jabril Peppers, 21 years old, 77 overall. I mean, we could be getting nuts with him moving to linebacker, moving to, you know, a skill position like a running back or wide receiver. But we need to keep him here at strong safety because we have not a whole lot going forward. So we're hoping to God he can develop into something special for us. Uh, it's going to be a kicking battle between Perky and Gonzalez. We'll probably just go with Gonzalez because he's younger. And then our punter is a fairly expensive punter here in Britain Colquitt. But the picks is where it's at. A first, a first, a second, a second, a second, a third, a fourth, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a sixth, a seventh. With the way that we drafted in the Jets for rebuild, we should be able to have a terrifyingly good first draft. So I'm fairly excited to get there. But we have to do this whole first year, and I have no idea how it's going to go. We're either going to be horrendous and get, like, one win, or we're going to be really competitive and get five or six wins. I'm kind of hoping we suck so we get, you know, especially with the our own first pick it's a top five pick and we could start things out with perhaps a secondary player a defensive back and then we could look at bringing in you know wide receiver stuff like that some more skill positions but with that being said we're going to simulate two the halfway point actually you know what we're going to do we're going to simulate one week we're going to see if we get any trade offers and then we will jump in to the beginning of the regular season all right, we've got some offers in for both Joe Thomas and John Greco, which is good to see because basically none of the players that we threw up on the Jets rebuild want to go. There is the first round picks, but they're, you know, all future 2019, and I need a 2018 first round pick. There's an interesting one here with uh, the Falcons offering up Tevin Coleman, and I've always kind of want to get my hands on Tevin Coleman in a rebuild, but the fact that no one's given up a 2018 draft pick first round, I mean, Joe Thomas is much more valuable to us than any of that, so we're going to decline these offers. But John Greco, on the other hand, depth at right guard we could debatably move him to the right tackle spot if need be but we do have cam irving there he's 75 he's young enough that maybe a second round pick we can get a second and a fifth from houston that might be better suited especially with the way that we've been able to draft uh as of late but actually look at that we'll take that the more picks the better a second six and seventh from the arizona cardinals that's exactly what i'm looking for so john greco has moved it might be better for a win now if we were going to keep him moving to right tackle but let's be honest we're not going to win this year number one so that's going to be the only trade so we're going to jump into the beginning of the season and uh actually you know what we already we already kind of looked at the roster we're looking fine there so I, we're going to sim all the way at, to the end of year number one and uh we'll see what we'll see what happens all right, before we get to seasons, and it's always time to talk about re-signing players. And look at who's available here for the Browns in year number one. Crowell is the only guy long-term that I want to sign mid-season. Josh Gordon, McCants, Pryor. I mean, probably Calvin Pryor and Josh Gordon, the two guys that I may try to look back once the offseason comes. But we're going to make sure we do whatever it takes to lock down Crowell. Hopefully, we can continue to have big years and we can get that normal development up to a quick development as I think he's still young enough to switch that over. So now, let's go to the end of year. All right, here we go, and we are at the end of year number one, and as you can tell by the practice squad players, we unfortunately did not make the playoffs in our first year with the Cleveland Browns, as surprising as that is. 8-8! Uh, eight eight. We will take 8-8. Eight eight. I was expecting, like, you know, low-key three wins. Three wins or less. 8-8 eight eight is a tremendous starting point, so I'm kind of optimistic here to look at the, st the stats on the year. Uh, look at Sean Kaiser, 36. We'll round that up to 3,700 passing yards, 28 touchdowns to 16 interceptions. Got sacked 42 times. That sack number's a little high there for how good our offensive line is and how much money we have invested. But 28 touchdowns, I mean, as a rookie, that must be... I think Russell Wilson has the record. Either Russell Wilson or Cam Newton. I think 28 is it. So just technically, as a rookie, Deshaun Kaiser tied the rookie touchdown record. Yards aren't too great, let's be honest. But that's pretty damn good. That's a tremendous starting point for Kaiser. Uh, rushing, 1,300 yards and six touchdowns from Coel. That is definitely acceptable for our starting running back. Uh, we didn't get Duke Johnson involved a lot. We got another two, um, 150 yards and two more touchdowns for Kaiser. So that's 30 total touchdowns on the year for Kaiser. I love looking at that. Uh, looking at receiving, and Joku led the team. 73 catches, 700 yards, and seven touchdowns. We got 970 yards, eight touchdowns from Kenny Britt. 905 from Corey Coleman. 503 from Josh Gordon. Almost 403 from Crowell. So, real good offensive production here from Isaiah Corral. 
Offensive line, that's, you know, it's it's Madden, so the tackles are going to be the ones that get raped. I don't think Joe Thomas has ever given up 14 sacks in his life. I don't think he's ever given up double-digit sacks in his life. So, I mean, Madden's got a Madden. And on the defensive side, oh my god. Defensive side of things, Christian Kirksey at 120 tackles, 101 for Jamar Taylor, 96 for rookie Jabril Peppers. Looking at the sacks, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Miles Garrett, 19 sacks as a rookie. That's defensive player of the year if I've ever seen it. Maybe That's defensive player of the year plus defensive rookie of the year. We got 10.5 from Jamie Collins, 5.5 from Danny Shelton. Ogba with only four. That's a little surprising for him. Uh, for interceptions, we got five picks from Joe Hayden. A little resurrection for Joe Hayden. Three from Jason McCourty and one down the board. So let's take a quick look here at the yearly awards. MVP went to Aaron Rodgers. There's going to be probably no Cleveland Browns in there. And coach of the year went to Griffin Murphy. No love. Come on, we have the Browns 8-8. Eight eight. That should be good enough. Offensive player of the year went to Brady. We had no one. Defensive player of the year. Miles Garrett coming at number eight. I guess 19, 19 sacks only gets you number eight within your own division. That makes sense. Offensive rookie of the year went to Deshaun Watson over Kaiser. Okay, let's we're gonna, we'll take out Deshaun Watson's stats right after this. And Joku coming in at number seven. Defensive rookie of the year went to Miles Garrett. That was easy. Peppers coming in at number six. So great production there. QB went to Brady. No love for what the fuck, man. No love for 28 touchdowns, I guess. Best running back. No love for. Crowell, best wide receiver. We're going to have no one. Offensive lineman. We got Joe Thomas coming at number five, even though he gave up 13 sacks. As mean, most sacks on our team still makes the best offensive lineman. Miles Garrett coming number two for defensive lineman. Joey Bosa got it. I don't even need to check that because Bosa is overpowered once again. Uh, linebacker. We had no one. DB. We had. Hey, look, Joe Hayden coming at number nine. So uh, we're going to go right to the playoffs and then jump into the offseason. But obviously, I want to see what. What did what did Watson have? Okay, no way. Four thousand yards, thirty-four touchdowns, but twenty-five interceptions. Thirty-four. Okay, so he had uh, six more passing touchdowns, but he had ten, oh, nine more interceptions. Kaiser got robbed. There's no other way to put that. He got absolutely robbed. All right, so yeah, we'll send him to the Super Bowl just to see that matchup, and then we'll get ready for the off. All right, quickly looking at the Super Bowl, the NFL Falcons got revenge in a rematch from last year's Super Bowl. Super Bowl Lee, 38 to 33. I'm assuming they ran the ball. You know, they ran the ball, but uh, pretty, you know, yeah, rinse and repeat Super Bowl. Hopefully next year we're gonna defy all the odds and get the. All right, so we're here at free agency. We don't have a whole lot of money because goddamn Brock Oswald is still a mass. We still take a hit on cutting Brock Oswald to over eight million, so we can't make that move right now. And we really, realistically, there's no free agents that we want. Look at, I mean, we're fine at a lot of these positions. Wide receiver, I was contemplating it, but I mean, Mon Donnie Moncrief is 25, and he's a big outside wide receiver. What was going to cost to bring him in here? I think he's really the only guy that I think might be decent long term, just because Britt and Josh Gordon, who we let hit free agency. They're definitely not in our long-term plans. So if we can make it so we have Moncrief and Corey Coleman as the building blocks, the starting blocks of our uh, of our wide receivers, and then we can try to build through the rest of it through the draft, that'd be best. So we're not going to overspend, though. We're just one point above the Bills. And this year in free agency, for those of you that don't know, you lose. Even though you're first place, um, it actually has been well done. You don't always get the guys you automatically bid on. Uh, outside of that, I mean, nothing, whole, nothing much there on offensive line, especially at right tackle where we need. Uh, defensively, we need it right outside linebacker. I don't really feel like bringing Barkevius Mingo back, to be honest with you. Uh, secondary, there's not a whole lot there. I mean, this is pretty much where we're going to try to invest our, our majority of our draft picks in at safety and at corner. Um, but yeah, so the only two guys we're actually planning on uh, targeting here is we got John Bostic, Gator Bias for a middle linebacker, going to try to lowball him. And maybe we'll be able to land Dante Moncrief at wide receiver. Let's get ready for a draft. We'll get a quick recap of our free agency, and then we'll jump into it. All right, so just before we get in and edit the players and get our rookies in, I had to showcase this draft recap. Not our best draft, I'm going to say. Not even as good as some of the drafts we had in the very first Jets rebuild. But I've never, I don't even think, even in the, the 2017 Madden 17 rebuilds, have I got double 81s. It did help that we had two first-round picks that were close to each other. But never had two 81s. I'm going to have some fun editing these guys. I'm not going to use Derwin James. I really want to. Uh, but, I mean, Derwin James would not fall this far. So that would be for another video, but there's still some good secondary players. We got some good offensive linemen, a 76 overall linebacker, a couple duds, which is why it's not our best, because we've had some complete drafts with the Jets. But overall, I definitely would give this a probably A minus B plus draft. 
But that double eighty one baby in the secondary, that's fucking dope. And look at the prospects that we were able to add with the 13th pick in the first round. We got Tarveris McFadden, the very talented corner from Florida State. Led the, I think he's actually tied for the NCAA lead in interceptions in the 2017 season. 2016, 2017. Uh, then we got Minka Fitzpatrick here at the number 15 pick. A little bit late than some people may have thought, but because he's a tweener between a safety and a corner. Um, and not the elite athlete that a Jalen Ramsey was, some teams... I kind of were hesitant about drafting and we're going to get a guy that has a more clear, defined position. So that is really something we're able to reap the rewards here and get a very talented playmaker. I think for this year, at least for now in the early going stages, if you're not at least a 75 overall, I'm not going to make you a custom rookie. Just because with how OP these drafts are getting 70s, we're going to run out of prospects real quick. So we have Nalbone and Morstead here as two solid serviceable offensive linemen. But then we got Obanya or Karanquo. Uh, from Oklahoma, very talented outside linebacker, 76 overall. I think he only has normal dev trait. Um, but he is going to be a big time player at the outside linebacker spot to compete for some starting minutes. We got a 72 defensive end. We got a 73 and 72. We got the fullback here, 72. Uh, I guess it is worth noting McFadden does have the superstar dev, and McPatrick only has the quick. Beggars can't be choosers, and that's good enough for me as we get ready for year number two. All right, so as we get ready for season number two, things are certainly trending in the upward direction for the Browns, and I am a little bit more optimistic at this point than I was with the Jets rebuild, where we were with that. Uh, looking at the quarterback spot, it does look like we have our franchise QB in Deshaun Kaiser. I mean, tying the goddamn rookie record for passing touchdowns in the sim was exceptional. And really, the only rough thing about a quarterback spot is Brock Osweiler and that cap, but hopefully we can get out of that after this year. But Kaiser, 82 overall. Unfortunately, we weren't able to bump that development into a quick or superstar. Maybe after another good year here, we can get into that. But I think 82, he's definitely trending in the upward direction as I said. Uh, the running backs, I mean, Crowell and Duke Johnson, a good one-two punch. Crowell up to an 88 overall, so that's a very good rating for him. Uh, we just have the rookie fullback here. Wide receivers, we have Kenny Britt, Dante Moncrief, who we are able to add in free agency, and Corey Coleman. Definitely need to try to develop and get a superstar wide receiver, as that debate was a downfall in the Jets rebuild. We didn't have a, you know, a legit superstar playmaker. I think we had Sterling Shepard, and that was it. Um, look at the tight end spot, and Joe, who's going to be a stud, 86 overall already. Offensive line, Joe, old man Joe Thomas is still holding on, which is pretty damn good. We got we got some young depth guys here, to be completely honest with you. So, I mean, future's not bleak. After Joe Thomas decides to hang up, hopefully he'll play to his 35, though, and the majority of this rebuild, we can have him on the team. Uh, left guard, Betonio's an 87. Center, Treader, 85. Right guard, Zeitler, seven, uh, 90, sorry. And right tackle, Drango, who we moved. He was a guard. He's a 79. Again, probably want to look to improve that, but there was no good right tackles in the draft or free agency, so it's going to be another year that he better hold on and be serviceable. Uh, left defense end, we have Ogba, who's not developing nearly as good as I thought. We have goddamn Miles Garrett sitting at a 91. Incredible. I mean, Miles Garrett and Jamal Adams, both from both rebuilds we've done, have been just absolute beasts. But almost 20 sacks for his rookie year for Miles Garrett. He's ready to just to take over again here. Uh, D tackle, we have Shelton Brantley as our two starters. You know, not bad. Uh, linebacking course, looking pretty serviceable. We got Jamie Collins, we got the rookie here, 77. Orkin Rockwo. Uh, middle linebacker, Kirksey's at 85. And then we got Schobert. So I'm actually probably going to slide. You know what? Let's put Urk Orkin Rockwo at the right side here. So he can get some starting minutes, hopefully develop a little bit. We want you to be a prototype. Thank you very much. Just add and get our starters out there. So yeah, we just right there improved our linebacker core a little bit. In the secondary, we have Joe Hayden, Jamar Taylor, Devin, uh, Jason McCourty, and Tavares McFadden. McFadden is currently corner four. We're going to make him start so we can get some of that XP. Uh, free safety, Fitzpatrick is starting. That was probably the best get for us in the entire draft because we did need a start at free safety. And then we get Jabril Peppers here at strong safety, now up to a 79. I assume after this year, he'll probably get into the mid-80s. We got Zane Gonzalez and Colquitt as our special teamers. But as we go into this year, what were we, 8-8 eight eight last season? 7-9, 8-8. Eight eight. We may, just may, in year two, make the playoffs, but we have to go... Uh, sim and see what happens with this damn thing so we'll probably go to the midseason point see who may be up in terms of contracts and then we'll go right to the off all right here we are at contract time and what i like to see here with mr joe thomas is he wants to come back for two years not necessarily saying he's going to but that two years would you know bring us to four total years of the five rebuilds which is exactly what we want so we're going to make sure we replay joe thomas plus that's not that much money and danny shelton is a key part even though we have switched to a four three and he's much more of a three four nose tackle I think we, we aren't in the position to lose a quick development, 84 overall defensive tackle. That's just entering his prime. Unfortunately, though, Duke Johnson, who I did want to maintain, and Jason McCordy, who's pretty you know serviceable. Uh, 
Well, obviously, we're not going to bring back McCordy, but a guy like Duke Johnson will probably have to wait to free agency, see what the market sets for him, because he will never, you know, kind of surplant Isaiah Crowell as our main back. But Shelton and Joe Thomas will make whatever it has to to bring them back for the upcoming season. All right, well, now here's a fucking surprise. Second year of the Browns rebuild. We made the playoffs. I remember in Madden 17, we didn't take us the whole year. We didn't make the playoffs, kind of like what we have with the Jets. So 9-7, and seven, the Browns made their very first playoff appearance in Lord knows how long. Like, since, like, probably the 90s or something crazy like that. Uh, let's look at the stats, and then we will just, um, we'll just sim it. Because we're this early in, and I still want to try to build up this team, uh, we'll just sim it. We won't get our influence on the game just yet. Uh, looking at how Deshaun Kaiser did, 3,800 passing yards, 28 touchdowns, the nine interceptions. He got sacked 54 times, considering our offensive line. That's not great, but overall, that's still another positive season. Pretty much what he did last year with less turnovers. So that's definitely uh, you know where we want him to be at this point in his career. Uh, running the ball, 1,200 yards, almost 1,300 yards, and 11 touchdowns from Crowell. We got eight touchdowns thrown in there by Duke Johnson. In terms of uh, passing, we got 75 catches, 900 yards, five touchdowns, Kenny Britt. Finally, a wide receiver that broke the 1,000-yard mark here in Corey Coleman with 1,000 yards and 9 TDs. We got almost 900 yards and 6 touchdowns from the free agent pickup Moncrief. And Jogu, 600 yards, 7 TDs. That's acceptable. But again, we definitely need to try to land a superstar wide receiver, I believe, to take the Browns to the next level. Uh, offensive line, I mean, whatever. Uh, defensively, my, man, okay. 126 tackles for Kirksey, 108 for Jamie Collins, 95 for Jabril Peppers. Look at this, man. Miles Jack, or not Miles Jack. Miles Garrett's a beast. 22 sacks on the year. He's this year's Joey Bosa. He's already sitting at a 95 overall. Look, 19 sacks, 20. He's going to be Reggie White 2.0. It's looking terrifying. I'm so glad he's on our team. But at least we know right now he, he's breaking the sim. We got seven sacks from Shelton, six from Collins, five and a half from the rookie Orkin Ronquo. I'm probably butchering that name. Uh, four picks, Joe Hayden, three from the rookie Fitzpatrick, three from Tavares McFadden. So our two 81 overall first round draft picks have already paid immense dividends. We got two, two, and two there from Taylor, Kirksey, and Peppers. So it's looking good. Let's see a quick look here at the end of season awards. MVP. We didn't get anyone. Coach of the year. What the? F what? Okay, number 10. The Browns make the playoffs, and Hugh Jackson gets number 10. That's bullshit. Uh, for offensive player of the year, Drew Brees has found his way into goddamn Denver. No Browns. We're getting robbed. 22 sacks only gets mop man. These things are still... EA, make these work. 22 sacks is better than number four for defensive player of the year. Jamie Collins come number nine. Offensive rookie of the year. We got uh, two people that we straight up... Like our fullback. And I don't even know who Tyler Bryant is. That's a running back that we drafted real late. Defensive rookie of the year. Alcon Warco at four. Fitzpatrick and McFadden all making the list. Best QB, we got Kaiser at number six. Best running back, no love for uh, Crowell. Best wide receiver, no love for Coleman. Offensive line, we got Joe Thomas, Kevin Zeitler. So that's nice. Defensive line, Miles Garrett still gets beat up by Joey Bosa once again. Um, sit there, linebacker, we got Jamie Collins. And defensive back, we got Joe Hayden. Again, back-to-back -back years, good for Joe Hayden. I like to see that. Uh, we could, So, yeah, we're going to jump into the sim for the... Uh, for, yeah, uh, for the uh, playoffs here, but I just want to see what the fuck is Joey Bosa doing that keeps beating Miles Garrett. That's pretty much where I'm at. I gotta see this. Okay, so he tied him in sacks, but what did he do? Oh my God, what did he do last year? Joey Bosa is a monster. Once again, he's an absolute monster. Plus, Mel Melvin Ingram had 21 and a half sacks, so the Chargers, we know at least back-to-back, -back, the Chargers are terrifying in the sim, I can only assume. So, that being said, you know, good year. Good year for the Browns. We're a surprise team as we won the AFC North. So, we have an AFC North title under our belts. So, now we're going to be jumping into our first wild card game against the Chargers. This is not going to be pretty. Let's see. All right, here we go. In a game that's featured probably the two best defensive ends that I've ever seen start out a year. Um, the last two years back-to-back -back for young playmakers. I don't know if there's anyone better than Joey Bosa and Miles Garrett right now. So open up the drive with a touchdown, and Chargers go down the field and score. It's looking like, man, the Chargers are going to be OP as shit once again. Well, we're in the red zone to go ahead 10-7, to but it looks like they're marching down the field there with the veteran president of Phillip Rivers. This is good. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm going to say we're going to lose. It's now down 11, trying to get a quick score to end the first half. That didn't happen. Chargers are on the mend again. Open up the third quarter. We're able to get a turnover, it looks like, but no scoring whatsoever, and that probably is the nail in the coffin. For this very young Cleveland Browns team, the scoreline kind of got out of hand here in the, in the second half. 
As, oh my god. Right, we got bodied. We got absolutely bodied, but I did not expect us to make the playoffs whatsoever this year. So we're definitely trending in the right direction. And it looks like, you know, I can now confirm another year that the San Diego Chargers, <coughs> LA Chargers, are the most feared team in the sim. And if you see them, you might as well just back out and start a new franchise. Alright, just quickly look at the Super Bowl here in year number two. The Seattle CX go over the Jacksonville Jaguars 33 to 28. A little disappointed that the Jags made a Super Bowl before the Browns did. But we're definitely, you know, I think we're going to get there. Alright, so as we get ready for the free agency period to enter year number three, we have to make note that we can finally free up some cap space. I was getting ready to jump in. I saw we only had $7 million of available cap. So now it's time to get rid of Brock Lobster. We're going to free up over $17 million in savings. Goodbye. Thank you very much for the picks that we're able to acquire. Uh, but uh, your, your services are no longer required here, bud. So, yeah, there's straight up nothing here. One of the worst draft uh, free agent classes I've ever seen. Greg Olson, Drew Brees, like all super old. I mean, Tevin Coleman could be interesting, but he's the same age as Corral, only two points you know, higher, so that's not worth going. I mean, you look at wide receivers. Jordy Nelson's the only good one, but he's 34. Is he, he's not going to really... I mean, we could try to bring him in on, like, a one-year deal, like a low-term deal. I don't even know if I'm going to... I might. I might. You know what? Fuck. Let's see what we can do here. 16 mil. Let's, there's no one else there. We're not going to use that cap anywhere else. So we might as well just see if we can bring him in for a one-year deal. And that maybe will help the more so the developmental process of Deshaun Kaiser and see if we can build upon uh, our playoff push. But outside of that, there's straight up nothing. A garbage free agency class. I mean, maybe we can get Jordan Nelson, but uh, let's go to the draft and see. That's where we're going to, you know, really, really make some gr ground here and try to complete this damn Brown. All right, post-draft is here. I'm going to say we'll just act like the, the picks that happened after our first two picks never existed. Uh, really happy with our third-round pick, as you'll see in a second. So the first round pick, 21, we got Toby Weathersby, a right tackle. It's a 79 I mean, quick dev trait, I'll take all those things, plus the 63 awareness, which means once we uh, start getting some XP, if we just boost up that awareness, he should be in the 80s sooner than later. Uh, he was one of the number one target that I wanted to get. He was a second round grade, but I knew absolutely we had to go get him. Um, so, I don't know, we may start him at right tackle. I think our starting right tackle, Drango's an 80, so we might as well throw in Weatherby there and get some XP. And then in the third round, we had a third round wide receiver. That was a speedster. I knew all along was going to be Antonio Callaway. I did not know he was going to get hooked up with this superstar development trait. But it makes sense with how you know Antonio Callaway's been off the field for Florida. Uh, he's an idiot. He's a really dumb player. But certainly like a first round wide receiver. An absolute deep threat. But his IQ is incredibly low. So maybe I should have went in there and manually made his awareness like a 38. Um, but he's, he's an unbelievably talent, talented wide receiver. So absolutely we needed one. Especially for the future. Might not get a lot of playing time now, but, you know, Kenny Britt, Jordy Nelson, they're, those are going to be guys that are on the way out. And really, our wide receiver core is pretty much looking forward. Corey Coleman, it'll be Antonio Callaway and Dante Moncrief. The rest of this draft, we're just going to call it, we got fucked because all the 69s. We got a 64, a 69, a 69, a 66. We got a nice 73 center here. Then a 69, a 69, 69. Oh, sorry, 69. We got a 71 D tackle here in the seventh round, uh, which is a, a complete shot in the dark. Uh, and then a 68, who well, actually I thought he was going to be a 69. So we'll call this the draft that we got fucked on after the first two picks. But still not a horrendous draft as we get ready for year number three. All right, here we go. As we get ready for season number three, trying to return to the playoffs, we will take a look at the roster. I will say in the Jets reveal, people are like, how are you not making any trades? Man, the trade block is not great this year, especially with what we have right now is a very well-balanced team. There's not a whole lot of players that, I mean, the running back, you got 86 Derrick Henry, you got Doug Martin, Kenneth Dixon. We're, we're fine at running back. We, we might need a backup, I guess, but outside of that, we're fine. I mean, Kenny Galladay, Darbo, some young wide receivers, but they're nothing better than what we have. Um, offensive linemen, like there's some 70s, nothing in the 80s. Like there's no real juicy picks here. So, you know, people say, oh man, I'm not going to make a trade just for the sake of making a trade. There's no one there. There's straight up no one there to use. Um... I will say on our team, though, when we go through our roster, I think I'm going to throw up Kenny Britt, see if we can get a pick for him or something, uh, as he has a surplus requirement. But look at the quarterback spot. We've just shown Kaiser here, who's now rocking as an 85 overall. We may actually, you know what? Let's see Let's see if anyone wants to give up something for Cody Kessel. That could be interesting. A 78 overall backup. we got Crowell, who's sitting at an 89. No more Duke Johnson, unfortunately. Our fullback is that dude. Wide receivers, we got Jordy Nelson here as a Band-Aid, a stopgap. Corey Coleman, Dante Moncrief, Kenny Britt, and Antonio Galloway. Uh, let's see if anyone wants the some Kenny Britt action, I suppose. Um, 
David Njoku's a 90s, a beast. Joe Thomas still hanging on, 93. 87, Batonio, 85, Treader, 90, Zeitler. And at right tackle, we have Drango and Weathersby. I don't think we're going to make Weathersby the starter. It makes sense, as he's the rookie. Uh, we have Ogba, who's not playing nearly as well as he did in Madden 17, unfortunately. But he's still serviceable, 79 overall. Almost uh, creeping up into the 80s. But Miles Garrett has been one of the best players I've ever seen in a rebuild, in a franchise. Already to a 96 overall. I mean, he's on pace to destroy the sack record. Even by the end of this five years, he might be at like 100 sacks. Uh, we got Shelton and Brandley still here to D tackles. Not a lot of development there, unfortunately. Uh, JB Collins holding strong is at 88. We got Kirksey, 86. We got Oak, Okoronakwo. I, I'm never going to fucking get that name right. But he's at 81 now, so it's looking good. Looks like we have found our right outside linebacker for the remainder of the rebuild. Uh, we got McFadden's in 84, Taylor and Hayden. I kind of want to throw Joe Hayden on the, play, on the trade block, but he's also been like our best defensive back. We don't really need much, even though it would be like 15 mil in savings. Um, I'm, I'm going to see if he can still continue to perform for us. Free safety, Fitzpatrick's up to an 84, and Drew Peppers is an 82. I thought he might have developed a little bit quicker, but at least he's still continuing to grow uh, throughout the year. So that being said, we're going to send him to the halfway point unless we get a good juicy offer for Cody Kessler. We'll see our re-signings and then get ready for the year number four offseason where hopefully we're in the... All right, looking at the contracts for year number three going into four, we have Treader. We're going to bring back. We have Corey Coleman. We're going to bring back Jamar Taylor and Joe Hayden. I'm going to take a gamble, let them both hit the market and see what happens. I mean, you know, that's a lot of money. You're not going to cost a whole lot to bring back. Ogba we're going to bring back, and that's probably it. I guess the AI is smart enough to know that even though we threw Cody Kessler up on the trade block, he was in the year of his last year of his deal, and they really didn't want him They just wait until the next following year. So out of these guys, we'll make sure we Corey Coleman and Treader are going to return at any cost, any means necessary. So hopefully we can continue, get these guys locked up, and make a serious play. All right, so at the end of year number three, we clearly didn't make the playoffs, so a step back as we went 5-11 on the season how do you how do you regress that bad if your team gets like, what the fuck where are we at my god we have a way better off i mean okay 500 points given out the back end i mean i don't know i don't know that's what the stats this is bullshit Kaiser on the year, 4,200 passing yards, 31 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. So the interceptions have risen again, even though we did bring in Jordy Nelson to uh, cut down on that. We got 1,200 yards, 8 touchdowns from Isaiah Crowell. In terms of receiving, Corey, I mean, no one really had a good year. Joke almost 1,000 yards, 7 touchdowns. Nelson came in, got 908. Callaway, the rookie, almost got 1,008. Moncrief's pathetic. Fucking was terrible signing last year, Mad 17 rebuilds. Looking like the exact same thing here in Madden 18. I'm going to tell you right now, stay away from Moncrief if you're simulating. Oh, my God, man. Defensively, we got 134 tackles. Kirksey, 102. McFadden, 101. Jabril Peppers. On the sacks front, we got Miles Garrett continuing to be, like, the best defensive player I've ever seen in a game. 18 and a half sacks. Uh, an interception, we got four from Peppers, which is nice. Nice to see him uh, have a big year. Outside of that, though, not great production, especially from Fitzpatrick. And McFadden, I mean, lots of deflections there for McFadden. 13, that's not bad. Um, not looking great, though. We'll just quickly look at the yearly awards. Trevor Simeon. Okay, this is just a fucked up year. Not only in our draft class did we just get fucked with all the 69 picks. Trevor Simeon, in this reality, won the league MVP. So we know something definitely is going funky. Fuck me, man. All right, let's just let's get this over with and get the bad taste of our mouth. Sim, see who wins the Super Bowl and then jump into the... Look at the Super Bowl here at the end of year number three. Brady is still playing, and his New England Patriots beat the Seattle Seahawks in a rematch from a couple years ago. 36-18, to because that's what everyone wanted, another Patriots Super Bowl. All right, here we are going into free agency for year number four, and we have lost some key pieces. No more Joe Thomas. No more Jordy Nelson. Uh, it's uh, The veterans are gone. It's all with the old... In with the new. So here's what we're looking at, Simon. We got the leading bid on Decker. He's going to be massive for us to get. Almost like a like-for-like -like replacement. But we have a Joe Thomas. We got Vernon Hargraves as Joe Hayden and Jamar Taylor accepted free agency. We definitely are going to have to use. We got two first-round picks for this upcoming draft. So we definitely have to try to use that to hit on a corner. We got CJ Procise here. He's an ideal fit to come in as a receiving back beyond a Crowell. We got Savage God as a backup, and we got a couple depth stages. But I would say Hargraves and Decker are two guys we absolutely need to get locked in. 
We'll sim. We'll sim the one week here. Hopefully, we could. Before we edit. Ha. All right, so look at the draft class for what is going to be a massive year at number four. We got Christian Fulton, the really talented corner from LSU, 81 overall with normal development traits, so we didn't get hooked up with a quick or superstar. In the second pick of the first round, we got Tyree Cleveland last year. We, uh, you know, maybe there's some Florida Gator bias here in Cleveland. Where they got Antonio Callaway, who slipped from some off field issues last draft. In the third round, we got Tyree Cleveland from Florida, 75 overall, who has quick developmental trait as we need to shore up our wide receiver core. We got Draymond Jones from Ohio State here, staying within the state of Ohio. Clearly, I yeah, get it. It's Ohio State, within the state of Ohio. Who's a 77 overall in the second round with quick developmental trait. And then we also get a 73 wide receiver here, 72 D end here. But then, I already butchered on this one. We had two D. I was between these two guys, and luckily, we we're able to get them both. So we got Chase Young, another very talented Ohio State defensive end, 78 overall with quick developmental trait. Uh, we also got a 71 overall corner here in the third round. Couple shitty 60s, and then finish up in the seventh with Ray Murdoch, who got a 71 overall. So now let's jump into year number four. I'm feeling like I'm feeling good for year number four. I don't know what it is. I'm just, je ne sais quoi. All right. So as we get ready for year number four, I'm feeling good, man. I don't know what it is. Let's look at our roster here real quick. It's I think it's good. Our roster. I think this is gonna be the year. I feel like Madden does fluctuate. You get a bad year, you get a good year. If your team is good, things just weren't falling our way. I think this year, hopefully they will. I mean, I don't know. I could just say that and Jakaj with those 30 picks. But he's sitting at an 89 overall. So he's definitely developed into a franchise QB. We got Savage Guy as the backup. We got Isaiah Corral holding even here at an 89. Hasn't really developed or grown that much. But still, an 89 overall running back is pretty damn good. We got an 80 fullback. Corey Coleman, Antonio Callaway, Moncrief, and Tyree Cleveland make up our wide receiver core. And I'm still, that's probably the biggest regret signing I've had so far is Moncrief. He's been terrible. I knew he should have been terrible because he was really bad in Madden 17. Uh, but that is what it is. And Joke was a 93. He's been a beast. We got Decker, our big fish that we landed in free agency at 92. Betonio, 87. Treader, 84. Zeitler, 88. And Weathersby, 81. So, I mean, the offensive line, they are getting older. They're starting to regress a little bit. But overall, no one below an 80 on the offensive line. So, I know, like, cohesive units is what's good here on the offensive line. And, I mean, come on. These these guys are good. They should be able to get the job done. On the defensive side, Ogba here is an 80. We got young rookie Chase Young, who's a 79. Uh, I mean, the time for Ogba, it might be running thin here. We have Miles Garrett, who's, you know... He's probably going to be a 99 by the end of the season. He may be the best defensive player we've ever had in a rebuild. Uh, he's terrifying. Uh, we got Danny Sheldon, Br uh, Brantley, and Draymond Jones and Ogunjobi. So not a lot of great outstanding talent, but consistent talent at defensive tackle. Linebacker core is Collins, Kirksey, and Okaranakwo. Well, I think I've said his name different every single time, but our linebacking core, very good. Our secondary, we got McFadden, who's an 87, Fulton's 81, Hargrave's 78, so slightly worse than what we had last year, but McFadden is developing to a beast, and hopefully Fulton can produce as a rookie. Uh, the safety, Fitzpatrick's an 87, and Jabril Peppers, who had his best year as a Brown last year, an 85, so I think overall our secondary is definitely good enough to get the job done. But, you know, it's all about it's all about doing the damn thing. So what we're going to do is sim to the midseason point, see if there's any free agents, as always, then go to the offseason. Hopefully, we're getting ready for a big-time player push. And I will say right now, if we make the playoffs, I'm going to play the damn moments because, I don't know, maybe the sim's going to make it incredibly difficult this year in Madden 18 to just sim your way to a Super Bowl. And I want to win a damn Super Bowl. I don't want to go 0-2 to start out the rebuilds. But anyway, let's go to the midseason. All right, so here we are at the halfway point with some contracts, and this was always going to be the big one, but we've been preparing for it. We have the available salary cap, so Garrett will be back at all costs. He may be a $100 million player, which he's probably going to be. And Joku's coming back. Kaiser's coming back. Jamie Collins is kind of near. We're going to offer him a deal, but worst case scenario, he hits the market. We can, you know, see what happens. He is 30. Peppers is coming back. And, I mean, after that, you know, we may try to get some guys, but I'm telling you right now that Peppers... Kaiser and Joku and Garrett, the young rookie core that the Browns put together in real life this year, will be doing whatever we can to bring them back, and that means we're getting them back. So let's go. We'll do this. We'll sign these guys up, and we'll check in back at the off. All right, so we're the end of season number four, and as you can tell, when you get to the off or well, the, the postseason, and you don't see any of your practice players signed, that means you made the playoffs. So. You know, a little bit wonky of the sim. Two years ago, we made the playoffs. Last year, five wins. This year, you're clear 13 and 3. Now, based off my roster, I would look at that and go, yeah, our roster's stacked. 13, oh my god, 15 and 1 for the Falcons. 13 and 3 is fair. I don't, I don't know if we're number two in the NFL. 
But 13 and 3 is fair when you take a, a broad look at our roster. We got A's everywhere. On the offensive side of the ball, A's everywhere. On the defensive side of the ball, you know, probably B, B plus total average. But 13 and 3. What a turnaround for the Cleveland Browns. And as I said before, we're going for it, baby. We're going to play the moment. We're actually going to try to put some influence and win the damn Super Bowl for the damn Browns. A feat that I have yet to be able to achieve here on my channel. I blew it at Kaiser on the year. 4,400 passing yards, 32 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. Absolute baller. Looking at the running backs, 1,300 yards and 9 touchdowns from Crowell. He's been very serviceable for us. Uh, we got 14 touchdowns from CJ Procise. Moncrief, who I probably shit on the most out of any player we brought in. 86 catches, 1,400 yards, and 10 touchdowns. We got uh, 84 catches, almost 800 yards, 6 touchdowns for Callaway. 744 and 5 from David Njoku. 806 from Corey Coleman. And then on the defensive side of things, 133 tackles for Christian Kirksey. And, I mean, 20 and a half sacks for Miles Garrett is, you know, there's our thumb, there's our uh, video title player. Miles Garrett is a Hall of Fame. If he continues this, and there's no reason why he won't, Hall of Fame. That's like, I've never seen anyone like that. Those are Reggie White numbers. Miles Garrett's a freaking nature. We also got, I think, 12 and a half sacks there from Jamie Collins. We got nine sacks from Okoronakwo. I'm, I'm butchering that every time I say it. Uh, eight from Shelton, seven from Ogba. Interceptions, we got a bunch of turnovers. Four for Tavares McFadden, four for Peppers, three for Kirksey, two for Collins, two for Fulton, and two for Minka Fitzpatrick. Quickly looking at the awards, did Kaiser get it? Ah, Zach Coker, just random dude on the Dolphins got it. Kaiser coming in at number seven, coach of the year. Hugh Jackson somehow came number three. That's, I, that's just racism. That's racism right there. Uh, offensive player of the year Kaiser coming at number four defensive player of the year we still can't give it Kirksey comes at number three got Garrett number five I don't mean I don't know man this these things are pretty much random that's how it feels uh, offensive uh, the rookie a uh, rookie won MVP there you go rookie quarterback won MVP now I've seen it all Trevor Simeon won it last year now a rookie won MVP Tyree Cleveland coming at number seven condo at number ten Defensive Rookie of the Year, we got Christian Fulton at number 7. Best QB, we got Kaiser coming at number 3. Best Running Back, Corral finally getting some respect coming at 6. Uh, wide Receiver, Moncrief, number 2. So good to see. He's a slow burner. Taylor Decker, number 1 offensive lineman. Ze Zeitler, number 3. Betonio, 5. We got Treader at 8. Best Defensive Lineman, we got Miles Garrett at 4. Best Linebacker, we got Collins at 3. Kirksey at 4. Finally see some damn production. And for defensive backs, we got Tavares McFadden at four. So not bad. Browns goddamn everywhere. And most importantly, we got that first round bye. So we're going to go ahead, go to the next week and see who we're playing in the AFC. The All right. I can do this. We can deal with this. We got the 10 and 6 Jags at home at first energy state. We got them at the dog pound. Oh, that's all right, here we go. We're going to try to play the moments. I don't want to have too much influence on this game. I really just, you know, if I can, I would like, you know, to maybe say that uh, how about the Super Bowl is when we actually try to come in. I like to see this team get there on their own right. I think we've built the the kind of team that should be able to get to the Super Bowl. But, you know, we're already found ourselves here in a 21-7 to hole. Uh, not looking hot. 24-7. 24 10 24 16 third down make the stop third down control big field another we're just settling for field goals left right and center red zone third down 25 27 big game okay here we go this is looking you know what five six seven a field goal will win this shit no don't do it c4 don't we're not doing this I want them to do this. We gotta let them learn. Sick or swim on their own right. Fourth down and 18. All right. Maybe not. Papa Bear needs to come in. Papa C4 needs to come in here. Cause I'm, I'm just very upset with the way my team is playing right now. Fourth and 18 with the season on the line. Oh, Moncrief! The man who's got shit on more than any player. <laughs> Let's take that. was bad coming. I think we had three dudes open on that play. Best believe we come in. Just pop a pop a bear just looking out for his pups. And our pups are little whatever from the dog pound. Whatever the fuck they are. Bulldogs. Let's go team. Red zone. 
Third down. Field goal, 27. We got the one point lead with 20. There we go! With only one play of Pablo Bear having to come in, walk them in. The Cleveland Browns are heading to the AFC Championship. Words that I never thought I would say, especially with, you know, the failures that we have with the Jets. But we're there, baby. We're doing this shit. Let's cut back when we find out who is going to be our next victim. All right, here we go. AFC Championship going up against the 12-4 and four Texans who are coming once again back-to-back -back in the dog pen. Hopefully some treacherous weather and we can pound on a team, you know, a stadium team. They ain't used to these. All right, here we go. Again, we're going to try to be, you know, a good mama bear, good papa bear. And only step in when need be. We're going to let him try to settle himself. So we're getting right there. Opening drive touchdown from the dog pound. They're getting hype right now. Defense is playing well. Good battle here, though. Battle of, you know, 2017 rookies. Deshaun Kaiser going up against Deshaun Watson. Definitely a matchup I would like to see. Uh, looking like we already had a turnover there. Looks like we get pretty close to scoring. We did not do that. But we got a 10-7 lead. Our defense is playing very well. You know, Lord can only imagine how beastly Miles Garrett's playing right now. Go. We're in the third quarter. Selling man. What is with our team just selling for field goals? Both playoff match so far. We have been very bad in the red zone. Third down alert. Just converting after converting. Come on, let's get a full touchdown here. There we go. 2013. Oh, 2020 tied ball game. Oh, don't make daddy come in. We had to punt it. We had to go 99 yards. For the love of God. Third down. I mean, we're in field goal range. Let's get a touchdown low. Let's put some, let's put some asses in the seats. 23 to 20 right now. Game's on the line. There we go. Hey, definitely not the most exciting game, but let's be honest. So the Cleveland Browns are going to find a way to get to the damn Super Bowl. It would be something like that. Game's decided by clutch field goals throughout Zane Gonzalez. We've been sticking with him through the tough times as Deshaun Kaiser outduels Deshaun Watson to send the Browns to their first... Super Bowl, a feat that in two attempts, over two hours, 10, I think we did 12 seasons last year, we could not get the Browns to the Super Bowl. I don't think we get the Browns to the AFC Championship. And here we go in year number four, a very talented Browns team looks to be heading to the Super Bowl. Let's, you know, let's get through all this nonsense. Let's see who... There we go. Top two teams meeting up here as we get ready to take on the Atlanta Falcons 15-1 at Super Bowl Dallas. I, I might not, I'm gonna try to edit it back in, but any, after the uh, the game against the Texans, when it goes to your, your player XP, it shows what our team's grade are. And we have a 97 overall offense and a 91 overall defense, and that is building this team realistic. We're not adding bullshit players, not making nonsense trades. That is just sticking with the core group of guys, making key free agency signings, and just, you know, putting in the hard work. Thank, and Miles Garrett, and Miles Garrett. But here we go. Trying to do it in year four. Not even using the full five years. Real cocky from the Cleveland Browns. Trying to get this damn Super Bowl. And going one to one for the final tally scoreboard for the rebuilds. Here in Madden 18 on Beast Mode TV. Now let's stop, let's stop talking about it. Let's be about it and get this damn thing done at a disgusting location in Super Bowl Dallas. All right, here we go. Let's try to make it so that, we you know, when you say taking the Browns to the Super Bowl, it's no longer a dad joke about taking a dump. I really don't want to get too involved with this game, but I really, I really want to win the Super Bowl. Let's see what we can do. Third and six. I mean, I don't know how much of a detriment this is going to actually be because I'm not uh, the hottest Madden player right now. I'm still getting used to this game. But I, I also, you know, that's that's what you get here with my rebels. I really want to get hands on with the team because what's the point of building all these teams if you don't actually get to play with them, you know? At the heart, I like playing Madden. I don't just want to see it be numbers and stuff. It surely makes it condensed. But, you know, you want to get your own little flavor on the game. So, big field goal. We'll let the field goal go there. As you know, it's been the mantra pretty much of our playoff push is once we get to the red zone, just kick a damn field goal, which has been a little bit disappointing. But we're at fringe field goal range here again. And, you know, you'll take what you can get here against Atlanta. As Crowell's looking good, big dick Crowell. Have you guys ever seen that hilarious Isaiah Crowell scouting tape? If you haven't, go check that out right now. All right, here we go. We're on the four. Oh. I mean, it might as well be time to bust out this. The first. I don't know if they have. They don't really have. Eh, fuck it. The first C4 special of the rebuilds here. Because, you know, if you tuned in for the Jets rebuild, we actually didn't even get to take over with the Jets. Because they never even made the playoffs once. So... 
first Sea Force special as you know it didn't work out. That that I mean I think it, I think it looks like they nerfed it. I remember when I was doing my official uh, review of this game, I said the the cheese plays got nerfed. It looks like the C4 special was untouched. The more and more I've played this game, it looks like the C4 special is definitely less powerful. They nerfed it. Oh, what a diving catch! David Ujoku, 94 overall, showing that unreal vertical, getting a very... If I was the Falcons, I'd be pissed off. You see a controller disconnect right now. What a touchdown catch from Ujoku. There you go. There's your Super Bowl moment right there. Oh, my God. Deion Jones, tremendous cover linebacker. It, a play like that. Let's go. And there's a fucking turnover. All right, 13-10. You know, doesn't seem like the Falcons did anything. And then I don't know what the turnover was. That was an interception. That was a fumble. But now they got the lead. I mean, that's the kind of bullshit that, you know, you always fear with the Browns, especially if they made the Super Bowl. They play really good, and they just have the Browns it up. You know, a, a, a very familiar term for when the Browns have a lot of draft picks that they're just going to Browns everything up. All right, it's third and 13. I, we'll just take the field goal here. Again, I don't want to get super involved with uh, with the game. I want to get involved. You know, I want to middle in there. I want to be like that mom, that pesky mom at your school. You know, she can't keep her shit out your business. I want to be like almost that, but also like sly enough that you don't know that I'm watching. I'm gonna act like I'm a spider and everyone else is just tangled up in my web. But I figured this would be a staple on this game. 13-13 ball game. End of the first half. Why not just conduct, what was this, a 98-yard drive? Get some points on the board. Obviously, you want a TD. Throw it away. Kaiser's feeling good. What was Kaiser's overall? I don't remember. 88? Low 90s? 91? At least, you know, this is a nice little template for those of you guys that are watching that, I don't know, Browns are going to be a popular team you want to rebuild. You're now seeing that a lot of the, the core rookies that they have, Njoku, Garrett, Peppers, uh, DeKaiser, Coleman is relatively young. They develop. You can hold on to these guys, and they will develop into something special. That was a horrendous throw. I mean, not even a good stat line from Kaiser. 8 to 16, 98 yards. And look, they're just trying to give up. We ain't giving up. We're the Cleveland Browns. We don't play, you know, Peyton Manning efficient football. We go to this guy who's a, clearly a, con, a new condo owner. We go to him over the middle. He gets a damn first down. And we're going to put some points on the drive and go into halftime with a lead. Oh, let's go, Kaiser. Oh, my God, what a run that was. 28 your rush from Deshaun Kaiser. I mean, almost, you know, if you would have get a TD, that would have been a Super Bowl play. But I still respect the shit out of that. Underrated. In terms of his mobile ability. And here's probably my favorite play. Definitely wouldn't be considered an overpowered play. But I'm going to say from how much Madden I have played. This has been a very successful play. Let's see. Let's see if we're going to make it. Oh, right there. Wide open. And Joku again. Halftime lead, baby. That's all we wanted. All we wanted with this halftime lead. Tremendous drive. Tremendous drive. Here we go. Third down. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. I think we get a... I mean, what the fuck? Oh, we keep going for two, I guess. I'm, I'm going to go with the fact that we haven't missed two extra points and we just keep trying to go for two. Because there's no way. That's that's bullshit. Fit that in. Corey Coleman with the tough drop. The fuck, man? Drop that shit. Right, we get the field goal, I guess. And of course, yeah, look. Don't, don't get to touch the fucking ball here. Fourth down alert. And we got a touchdown. One point lead. Third down. Let's end this shit. We're on the 50. Halfback wham. I remember someone during the uh, Madden All Team live stream said this is the most overpowered run in the game. Whoever said that, if you're watching this, this is on you. This is your credibility. Oh, yeah, it works. First down. 32 rushes. Good to know that that's still the thing in the Super Sim. Just run the ball like 90 times. We're in the red zone. Third down in the red zone. Just ah, uh, come on. Third and one. Why aren't we running this? Zone split. We're run to where there's less linebackers. Come on, baby. And we get the first down. Big Dick Crowell. That should be it. Like we could play pussy ball. I'm gonna let the sim do its thing, but we could probably play pussy ball and grind. Oh, we just get the touchdown right there. It's over. 
The Cleveland Browns, after four years, have done what I never thought was possible. You see the orange confetti dripping down over Dan Quinn and Matt Ryan. They face defeat again. Make sure they're not on suicide watch for failing. Once again, the Cleveland Browns. I repeat, the Cleveland Browns are Super Bowl champions. I'm giving, I don't know who they're going to give Super Bowl MVP to. Probably Kaiser. We don't know Miles Garrett's stat line. It could very well be Miles Garrett. I personally would give it to David and Joku. Let's, oh my God, let's just soak this in. You're not going to see this everywhere. It was tough, man. Like, just look at how it took us in Madden 17. Couldn't do it. Two rebuilds, two long rebuilds. Two rebuilds that, you know, we went into overtime. We usually do five years. We went six years in both Browns rebuilds. Could not, I don't even think we got to the championship, as I said earlier. But finally, feels mission accomplished. I was a little bit front of that. Touchdown catch by Njoku. That was incredible. I said Njoku's my Super Bowl MVP. And that two TD catches, one of them, the Super Bowl moment. Oh, they're giving it to Kyle. Of course, you wouldn't tell you give it to the damn QB. Unless they're giving it to Toby Weathersby from LSU. Oh, they didn't even give it to him. I think they're going to tell us. I, I imagine Madden would release that. There's not enough memory to show us who won the Super Bowl MVP. Um, I, to I totally... Oh, yeah, I was pretty pissed off with the Jets that we didn't get Super Bowl. We didn't even get a playoff. So at least here, we got the damn job done. Everyone there with Hugh Jackson, Christian Kirksey. We got Corey Coleman to Sean Kaiser, and I don't know who the other dude is. Miles Garrett's ass deserves to be up there after he gets 20 sacks a season. To Sean Kaiser hoisting that Lombardi trophy. Are you going to tell me who won the... They don't even tell... They got rid of it. Who won the MVP. But there we go. Super Bowl champions. Thank you guys for watching the realistic rebuild of the Cleveland Browns. Smash the like button if you enjoy. I don't know. I like a thousand likes. We had a thousand likes on the Jets rebuild. How about a thousand likes for winning the damn Super Bowl with the Browns? If this is your first time stopping by. Don't be afraid of that subscribe button. Leave a comment in the comment section below with what team you want to see for next Friday's rebuild. I'm personally kind of leading to maybe doing the Chiefs. See what happens with Patrick Mahomes. But I'm not... I'm definitely not tied down to that. Um, yada, yada, yada. Thank you for watching. Until next time, it's C4. Same peace out.